if we look into the scriptures to find that which is awaj or crooked the criterion which we should use to begin our research is the Quran look to the Quran and use the Quran as the yardstick with which to measure that which is in previous scriptures so when you find in the previous scriptures a different story that Musa alayhi salam went up the mountain which mountain? Mount Sinai and he left Banu Israel in the charge of his brother Harun alayhi salam and when he came back down he found Banu Israel worshipping a golden calf made of gold I wonder why they're still doing it up to today Huh? not all of them of course the Quran tells us that Musa -Islam, held on to Harun -Islam, by his ear and Harun -Islam, begged him please please brother don't hold on to me like this O son of my mother I am innocent I am not responsible for this it's the Samiri he is responsible and I feared that if I had intervened, it would have broken up the unity of the community. So he's innocent. And then Musa alayhi salam prayed to Allah for protection and forgiveness for himself and for his brother. And then took on Samiri. But when we go to the Torah, we find something else. The Torah tells us that it is Harun. He is the one responsible for uh, forging this golden calf and asking the people to worship it. This is your homework now. I have given you a few examples. Every time you find an iwaj, something that is crooked in the Torah, in the Gospel, you know in advance that Dajjal is going to use this as a battleground to attack you. And so you will be prepared and you'll be able to defend yourself. But imagine my surprise when about Two years ago, I realized, and it was astonishing for me, because these things come like a flash, that awaj or crookedness cannot be restricted only to the previous scriptures, to the Torah and to the Injil, but that awaj or crookedness can also infiltrate the hadith namely fabricated a hadith and if they are fabricated a hadith the Dajjal is going to use those a hadith as well to attack us so now we take a look and see how have the attacks already started? One of the reasons why the internet has come <laughs> is to facilitate this attack upon Islam and upon the Muslims around the world with speed, with speed, effortlessly, within hours. Mm -hmm. If you go to the internet, you'll see the signs of where the attacks are coming from. The hadith is there in Sahih Bukhari, it is there in Sahih Muslim, it is there for Muttafaqun Ali, <laughs> it is also hadith which comes from very various sources, it's also in other books of hadith. So such a hadith is universally accepted as valid. What does it say? 
It says that Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha said That Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam married me when I was six And that is absolutely false Totally and completely and absolutely false And it's there It's there Did Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam ever have a marriage ceremony to marry her? Where's the evidence? Well then what happened? It's there in the seerah. What happened was that he had a vision. What happened was that the angel came. There was a vision. And the angels were carrying a golden tray. And on the tray there was something covered with a silk cloth. This is in the seerah, this is in the hadith. And the Prophet was said, remove the cloth. This is Allah's gift to you. And when he removed the cloth, there was Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha on the tray. Indicating that Allah had ordained that this is your wife. If Allah has ordained the marriage over there, can you perform a marriage ceremony here? Huh? Is it true to say that the Prophet married her? When it is Allah who did it? Was there ever a marriage ceremony here? In a marriage ceremony, the girl has a choice. Yes. Did she have any choice? And so this hadith is false. When it says that the Prophet married her, married me when I was six. And that the marriage was consummated when I was nine. Not only are they already attacking us with this, this awaj, but the worst is yet to come. Because Tunisia just voted and the Islamic party won the elections. And Egypt is voting next month. And you can close your eyes. You can close your eyes and tell that the Islamic parties are going to win the elections. And then there's going to be a domino effect all over the Arab world. And Islamic parties are going to win all over the place. And then the cry will be to restore the Sharia. And there are ulama in Egypt who are speaking with great eloquence now for the restoration of the Sharia. When you listen to them on the internet, the chairs will fall from your eyes with such eloquence. And once they say we, we have enforced the Sharia, then Dajjal will attack. And a fa family will come before the Sharia court in Egypt with a daughter who is six and with a man who is 55 for a nikah. And Al Jazeera will be there and CNN will be there and the New York Times will be there and the Washington Post will be there and the London Times will be there and the Sharia court will have to rule. Is it Jai's? If this hadith is valid, then it is jais. Okay? And if this hadith is false, it is fabricated, it is not jais. If you have eyes and yet cannot see, you will not recognize that it is fabricated. And all indications are that they will say it is jais. And when that marriage ceremony takes place, Muslims around the world are going to be searching for a place to hide their faces. Because the shame and the disgrace will be so great. People are going to be laughing at us. Is this your religion? Every pedophile in Australia will want to become a Muslim now. And so we end. Surah Al-Kahf of the Quran. And the Messenger of Allah says, recite the first ten ayat. We've taken only one out of the ten. You have homework to do. This book attempts to look at the first ten ayat of Suratul Kaf of the Quran.
we pray that we will wake up now and return to Surah Al Kafi and study it, not just recite it, so we can understand the world today and anticipate the attacks tomorrow. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka inta samiyul alim wa tuba alayna ya mawlana inna ka inta tawwab rahim bi rahmatika ya rahim. Ameen.